Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world, and welcome to another episode of the Opinionated Brit Podcast, and indeed another season. Uh, we're on season three. My name's Andy, and I'll be your host for this episode. On this podcast, we talk to some of the influential people from the wet shaving, men's grooming, and YouTube world. We find out what they're known for, who they are, and have conversations that you might not normally get to hear. On this first episode of season three, I'm talking to one of the big guns from the wet shaving industry. Uh, they started uh, the business as a hobby, or what started as a hobby and a love of wet shaving uh, has driven them to create one of the most well-known and popular art and shave brands around. Uh, the Kaizen Soap Base is one of the uh, that pops up over and over again in discussion on forums and groups and has recently announced the second version of this. He's from Shelton, Connecticut. We all know the brand as uh, Ariana and Evans, but it's my uh, pleasure to welcome onto the podcast today the man behind it all. It is... Uh, Peter Jakalis. Uh how are we doing, my friend? How's it going? Andy, I'm doing well. Good to be here. Is it is it Peter or is it Pete or, Peter. or? So I used to work for a British software development company. So I used to go to the UK is like my second home, by the way. So I used to work out of uh, the office in Harrow. So I would go there several times a year uh, in, in Harrow. So they used to call me Peter. <laughs> so Peter, you can, call me, you can call me whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you've been called a lot worse. Much worse, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. What are you drinking? Uh, I'm, I'm on a Bulmers. So anybody that watches my uh, my videos on YouTube will say I'm quite partial to a Bulmers cider. I know uh, Stan Aids from Pacific uh, Grooming, he's, uh, he's quite partial to a cider mm. as well. Um, how about you? What are you drinking? Looks nice. like red. So, yeah, my wife picked this up. It's uh, I've never tried this before. It's just a, a Spanish red. So... Um, We'll see how it's so far so good. It's going down all right. Cheers, mate. <laughs> yeah, cheers. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all the people listening and watching as well. So, uh, yeah, today's our day. Um, right. uh, what have you been up to today? Anything or nothing? Or Well, I, I was telling you, so for, for the viewers, I, I'm, I'm horrifically late because, first of all, I forgot it was Father's Day. <laughs> and then, uh, so my wife surprised me. She had reservations for a restaurant. So we went to this restaurant, but it was packed with, with people. Of course, you know, Father's Day, a lot of people go out. And uh, but it took forever to get served. Took forever to get the food. So uh, so I'm a bit late, and then I had some trouble connecting. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so that's pretty much it for today. Then, as I was telling you uh, afterwards, I'm gonna I would be making soaps all night uh, tonight. So that's that's how I'm spending my Father's Day, and with you, you of course. Yeah, yeah. You, you've uh, you've recently taken somebody on though, haven't you? Training somebody up to help you with the uh, the soap making. Yeah, yeah. So um, they're still training. They'll be here tomorrow, and. Um, I need to get them up to, up to speed because I'm leaving for uh, um, 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 the Philippines on Saturday, so uh, for an extended period of time. So I'll be I'll be in Asia for uh, through um, the 21st of July. So, but yeah, we're okay. But that's why I'm also uh, making soaps uh, pretty much around the clock just to make sure we have everything in stock. <laughs> so there's, you know, no no issues. Where where did you go for your meal? What's that? Where did you go for your meal? Ah, we went to an Italian restaurant here in town, well, a little bit outside of town. Nice. So, of course, yeah, Italian food. I'm half Italian, half half Greek. So. Oh, well, there you go. Did it? Did it live up to your uh, Italian heritage? Yeah, of course. Yeah, <laughs> just a little bit slow, but it's okay. Ah, well, I, I suppose you got to let them off. Is it Father's Day? I suppose. Um, so we'll we'll crack on with uh, yeah. I suppose the main bulk of it. Like I said before, there there is no real. It's nothing formal. It is just a chance for, I suppose, me and other people watching to get to, get to know you as a person, as well as the, the man behind the brand. Um, let's talk about the brand. Obviously, I touched on it earlier. How, how did you get to where, where you are today? Never thought it would, it would be like this. So um, I, as you mentioned, I was just a, a hobbyist, you know, just like everyone else. You know, I, I would stand by my, my computer and, you know, when I knew something was coming up uh, on sale and you know, keep refreshing. <laughs> so I wanted to be among the first to, to get a certain soap. And back in those days, I mean, um, there was a lot, a lot less artisans. So it was really a big deal when a new soap would come out. And um, maybe not so much now, not, not, not as much. But um, so a lot of the guys, a lot of guys I would pal around with online, um, we would all do the same thing. So I was just a hobbyist. And um, you know, I had so many soaps. I mean, I caught the bug really, really bad with this. <laughs> and so uh, I was I was buying, I first purchased, I didn't know about these groups or anything like that. I made my first purchase on Amazon. I had, Tobbs was my first uh, soap. 
Top Sandalwood and and um, what else? I forget. Tobs and there was a couple others I never even heard of before and haven't seen since. Uh, but I just purchased them blind through through uh, Amazon and um, and Edwin Jagger DE eighty nine was my first razor. <laughs> it came with Derby blades, <laughs> so you know. So I mean, I was just a hobbyist, and I, I but but I went crazy with it. And I just stopped counting out of out of embarrassment <laughs> at 180 soaps. And there's the guys that will have a lot more. But my my daughter, because I had um, so as I mentioned, I worked for this British software development company. I had my office set up, but my office was full of soaps. <laughs> and then um, you know, in, in the living room, I just had st- stuff everywhere. And my my daughter said, you know, Daddy, y- you have too many soaps. You should you should open up a business and sell them. And then just a light bulb went off and, and mm, I'm not going to sell my soap. So maybe I should start a little hobby, little business on the side. And this way, when I retire, you know, maybe I'll have something, I have a few, a few dollars, to, you know, spending money. That's really the, the reasoning behind it. Just for to make a few dollars. Uh, not that it would be in my main, in my main gig. And um, so, so that's how it began. And then I was thinking, well, how the hell am I going to do this? I don't know how to make soaps. And what am I going to do? I'm going to compete. You know, here in the states, we have Magards is immense, right? And you have West Coast Shaving, and you have these other, you know, uh, outlets, uh, retailers that are, you know, quite popular and were popular back then too. And I, I thought, well, I have to do something different. And what I did is I decided, and because I, I was a hobbyist, and I was also on YouTube, and I was I was doing reviews, and so I kind of knew all the artisans that were out there. And um, so I would contact them. I, I spoke to a few and I thought, you know, you know, what do you think? What do you think it's a good idea? And I said, my idea is to um, have a store, but instead of trying to compete against the big guys, I can never do that. Let's, um, why don't you guys, would you be open to um, making soaps exclusively for my store? And so they couldn't even sell it. <laughs> so that's how, <laughs> how it was. So they would make soaps exclusively for me. And, um, and that's what would set me apart or, the, the company apart, the original shaving shop. Um, and that worked out really quite well. And then we just com- kept on expanding. And then from there, I had the brilliant idea of, you know, why don't I, why don't we do like a, create an Amazon prime for wet shavers. And so I, ex- I, I expanded that out to um, the shaving shop and club. And then people can join a, a the, a membership and I had three di- back in those days I had three different tiers and you had to join it's really quite different than it is now and um and I would have I had this app that the software which would allow artisans to create their own like marketplace just like Etsy or just like mm-hmm. Amazon right and but it never worked really really well it was a disaster <laughs> I it worked but it was just really it was very difficult and um but it, we, we did it, and that's and that's how we kind of expanded from there. And then some uh, brands made exclusives for 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 that business, that part of the business. And um, but then I decided, you know, um, why don't I try making my own subs? Because there was no consistency, and sometimes a lot of the artisans we, they would run out of stock, and it would take them for. I was in a big player, so it would take forever to um, replace some of the stock. Yeah. And everyone had their own jars and there there was no consistency right and i was thinking you know i would really like more of a consistent type of offering same jars same kind of you know look and um everyone had you know they had different ingredients some had vegan some had tallow some were you know absolutely superb some were really good um but there was no consistency so, so i thought i would just try my hand at me so so and then the rest is history so sorry <laughs> i'm very long-winded there no no answer, answer that, 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 that's fine that's what we want so what what was the what was the first soap you made that was um i suppose a success so you know i i thought it was asian plum but someone's telling me it was uh socal hips i don't think it was socal hipster it was asian plum so when i was making um soaps when I was when I was first trying, I was using my wife's crock pot, which was a mini crock pot, like this big. <laughs> Literally, it was like this big. And I made my first pot of soap. Uh, I did a lot of um, reading. Oh, you know, on, on the internet, you can find anything. Oh, and I also spoke to a couple people. So Avita of Olia, now Chicago uh, Grooming, she was making soaps for me, and um, so we became really close. And so she knew about. I I, I told her all about this. And um, 
so I, I spoke to her and I spoke to Stefan was a lot of help. Stefan of the Holy Black. Do you know, mm. do you know Stefan? Yeah, 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 no, you, yeah, yeah. Have you interviewed him? I haven't interviewed him. I've tried oh, to get, I've tried to get in touch with him. So you can get a hold of him. If 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 you've got any yeah, contacts to to get me in the back door, then please do because I um oh, yeah I'll, he's he's a good friend yeah yeah, yeah I tried he's a lot yeah. of fun no I can um, imagine so yeah no you actually you can't <laughs> <laughs> he's not. Uh, so um so Stefan he's great and um he he gave me just a laundry list of things that I need to get you know all right get yourself a um you know twenty quart stainless steel uh, pot get yourself an induction cooktop and what the hell's an induction cooktop i don't know what that is and um but that's what a lot of the artisans use especially the ones that are doing it out of their house yeah. and in the kitchen so you know get that get that get the infrared thermometer get the you know drill or the, you know to, to mix the soaps you know you don't want to do that by hand so he just gave me a whole laundry list of stuff so i bought all this stuff and i did a lot of research on you know how to make a soap <laughs> you know different <laughs> you know and um he also put me he goes you know his the first soap that he did he, he found it on, and I think it was Badger and Blade or one of these uh, um, um, uh, social media platforms. And he said, you know, the guy from, um, he used to, it used to be LA Shaving, I think it was called. Um, he goes, he just posted his entire recipe. Wow. And he goes, and that's why I made my first soap that we actually went to market with. And he <laughs> goes, you know, try it. He always don't necessarily do, do that, but, you know, read up on it and see and, and kind of create your own. So I looked at that, looked at, some other recipes and on YouTube. And so, but I'm also a hobbyist, right? So I kind of know what I like. So I'm not going into this blind. I know as a hobbyist, what I want in a shave, shave soap. And then I, so then I know what kind of works in some of the better soaps that, that, that I enjoyed. So one thing I knew for sure is I always enjoyed tallow uh, a bit more than vegan. Yeah. Back in the day that, that I think has closed. The gap is closed now completely. I, I think um or or close to it but uh so i knew i knew i wanted tallow uh cold river soap works was a, a favorite of mine and they had lanolin and goat's milk and i loved i loved their post shave and so i took a little bit of what some of my favorites were doing and i kept experimenting ex experimenting and um so i made my my first pot was in that little crock pot and i took i had the sil big silver spoon <laughs> and uh, I, 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 you know, dipped it in. I ran into the bathroom. I waited for a, a couple of minutes because they hardened quite, you know, pretty quick. Um, so right on the spoon, I started lathering it right on the, from the spoon. <laughs> and I was amazed. I, you know, it wasn't cured, obviously. It was literally straight from the pot. And my, my very first soap, going into a blind, not knowing, guessing at the ratios, because you have to kind of have these different ratios right uh of um you know soap to lie yeah. you know whatever you do so um i guessed at everything and it was it was really good i said holy shit <laughs> I, I might be onto something i i just guessed right it's not because i'm a genius and um it was really good in fact it was as good as some of the soaps that i shaved with back in the day and that was my very first go so um, thank God I wrote down that recipe, <laughs> what, I, what I did, what I liked. And I kept tweaking it and tweaking it until I thought it was ready to market. So then I decided, you know what? Um, my opinion is biased and I, I really need guys that I trust. And um, so I, I contact, I had like 10, 10 guys, Rudd's, Jason Rudman, does, he hasn't done it in a while, but no, yeah, Rudd's yeah. and you know, a whole bunch of guys, uh, uh, um, Chris Bailey, uh, Anthony Esposito, you know, guys that I knew because I was a hobbyist and I was a YouTuber and yeah. I knew all these guys and we'd go to the meetups. So um, I had my friends uh, become my testers. Oh. And I, I said, listen, um, it has to be, so even if I think it's ready, uh, all of you have to say, give it the thumbs up that it's, it's, it's good to go. And it can't be just good. It has to be because I was somewhat of a known commodity because of YouTube and just being in the, you know, in the shaving community, in the business also, because I had already the shaving shop, it had to be really good, not just good. So good wasn't good enough, I, I didn't, I don't think. And um, so they knew that. And uh, when they all gave me the thumbs up that it was ready, then I released it. So that was really helpful. I, I couldn't have gotten there without them. So your question was about the soap. So I think it was, it was Asian, but oh, so, so that was unscented. Here we go. So, um, Anthony Esposito, do you know Anthony? Yeah, I know Anthony. Yeah. All right. The so, stallion. You know, 
yeah. yeah. So he, he goes, uh, dude, dude. I, so I said, I want to do a, um, I, I want to create a scent and give it to you guys as a thank you gift. And he goes, oh, dude, you got to do Kalani. No, you can't find Kalani anywhere. You got to do Kalani. <laughs> I never tried Kalani. So, of course, he, he didn't he didn't give me any. He didn't want to give up his precious. <laughs> uh, I'm joking, right? Um, but a, a friend of mine, um, uh, another friend, had gave me a little nugget of, of Kalani. Uh, what was it? Uh, Kalani something plum. Um, you know what I'm talking about. Oriental plum, I think. It's That's called. it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, um, which was, it was good. But I thought, you know, I could, we could do better. So that was the first. Um, today's Asian plum is a bit sweeter than what I had originally done with those guys. But I did some research. I found out the notes that were in it. And um, I created an Asian plum. So that's that was the, the first. Nice, nice. How many, um, how many times did you go back and forth and redo the formula before you got to uh, the final uh, one? Actually, with those guys? I don't, I don't remember because it's been, it's a while now. It wasn't, it, you know what? It was it maybe seven, but prior to that, I probably had thirty <laughs> yeah. or, or, or more on my own. And then when I thought that I was ready to market, that's when I brought them in. Yeah. So um, it was already a, a pretty good soap. But um, you know, Rod, Rod said you got to do, you got to do better on the the po shave. And another guy said the po shave was great. You got to do better on the slickness. Mm. Um, so. Um, to please everyone, I just try to improve everything. That it, um, again, I wasn't a soap maker. At the, I was making soaps, but not a soap maker. So a lot of it was guesswork. A lot of it was research. A couple times I would call uh, Vita or I would call um, Stefan, you know, for advice because I, you know, I, I think I called um, Chris Cullen of Katie's Bubbles uh, once or twice as well. So everyone wanted it's great. Um, even though they're, you know, they're in the business too. Everyone's really, really quite helpful. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's really how it began. So it began with that, that soap. And it really, I, I think put us on the map as a, a as a soap maker, uh, at least, you know, we were someone to, to take notice, you know? Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. And then, yeah, we did, we, we really did quite well with that soap and still do. Uh, that soap. So that was, uh, that was good that Anthony had suggested that. that <laughs> yeah, so he's 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 got a lot to uh, you got a lot to thank him for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. No, thanks for that, Peter. That's a it's a good insight. I mean, a lot of the people, some of the people listening to this may not be into they may just be into podcasts, and it's good just to get a background on on how it it came to be where it is today. And and some of the guys that I suppose that have been in the the wet shaving game for a long time wouldn't know sort of the the warts and all story behind it so no that's that's part of what i want to get from these uh these episodes um how many um i suppose you've got two elements to the the company you've got obviously the shaving shop and the club and then you've got the the, the sort of mainstream um a and e soaps do you know how many um i was looking at it earlier while i was waiting for you do you know how many soaps and putting you on the spot here how many soaps do you I, have from shit i have no idea <laughs> Did you count them? I have no idea. I, well, it actually says, I, I didn't obviously look at the shaving shop, but on, on A&E, it actually tells you right at the top of it. If you just go to the soaps, it, it tells you at the top. You've got 24. Oh, is, I didn't yeah. notice that. 20, 24. Yeah, so I probably, I was going to get probably about, uh, if we, just soaps, or if we include, include like Skin Essentials and the Splashes and the, the Skin, I don't know, probably in upwards of, you know, 45, 50, maybe, maybe a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, and give you, or take. You, do you try and limit that? Do you, do you try and set yourself a sort of a threshold of how yeah, many? It's really difficult. I, I, I try to, and I wanted to actually do a lot less, but, um, but there's a couple of reasons why, why to, to, to have more. Uh, one, you know, I, for me to release the soaps, I have to love it. I'm not just going to release it because I think it's going to sell, and, but I think it sucks personally, but <laughs> I'm not going to do that. So I, everything I do, I do for myself. Right? I create for myself. I create what I really like, and and I just hope that others will will enjoy it and will, will love my whatever whatever I offer. Yeah, so, you got it. Yeah. So with that with that being said, um, it's difficult if I love something. <laughs> otherwise, I wouldn't have it. it. You know, I wouldn't sell it. Um, it's, it's difficult to 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 not sell it. So I've been I've been um, debating about um, um, Pompamous. I love that scent. We, we don't sell a whole heck of a lot. Maybe I should change the name, but I think it's right. <laughs> uh, so it's uh, like a, um, 
grapefruit and rose and some other notes, some woody notes and has some little bit of green to it. Um, so, you know, I have to debate whether, you know, do I, do I transition stuff out? I, and I have done that um, and then move something in. Or I just keep building. I mean, I, obviously, I can't. I don't. I don't want to become. I'm not going to name brands, but uh, you know, uh, other brands may have you know 80 or 100. Who knows? Or or more. And um, I don't. I don't want to necessarily do that. So, but I also want to keep everything that that sells well. So I have to kind of um, balance that a bit and always evaluate. And now that um, I'm this is it for me. This is, this is my, the way I make my, my living yeah. feed the family and my daughter's going to college. And, um, so I, I have to, I guess I have to make some smart business decisions and not just go based upon passion, mm. uh, which has gotten me this to this point so far, but now we've grown so much. I have to be, <laughs> become more of a, a, a businessman, I suppose. Mm. <laughs> um, cause a lot of what I do is out of passion and out of like a thinking, like a, a hobbyist, rather than looking at the bottom line. So um, that need, cause we, we have, we have grown a lot. I mean, literally, literally um, the place is a mess here now, but you've seen pictures of my, yeah, my yeah, yeah, yeah. here, right. And, um, but a year, a year and four months ago, I was making this stuff in the kitchen. <laughs> and then, I, and then I, um, we grew out of that. The whole, well, our whole downstairs was just full of boxes and soaps. It just became, a, a production facility, which was, we couldn't have guests over. My daughter was embarrassed to have her friends over. It was just a mess. <laughs> but really, it was just yeah, crazy. yeah, no, no I can imagine. Yeah, the challenge if you're an artisan and you're doing quite well, where are you going to store the stuff? Mm. You know, a house isn't built. A house is meant to live in, not to, to yeah, to yeah, have yeah, production and storage and all. so. Um, so what I did is I built an addition. You may have seen this or heard this um, off the back of the house. So it was like 15 by 22 plus the garage. So I had the garage plus this 15 by 22. Um, I may be a little bit off on, on dimensions, but um, addition, we grew out of that in eight months. <laughs> and that's why we had to move in here. And we've out, I don't know if I should, I mean, it's a mess. Now it's a <laughs> mess because um, for a couple of reasons, we just got done with this, uh, this EU order. So it was, yeah literally uh 20,000 units. Wow. Um that I mean for for an artisan for somebody like me that's still making these by hand um that's an enormous order. We're not a we're not a manufacturer, right? Yeah, yeah. Where we just turn on the button and they just spit out <laughs> just, you know stuff. You know, I'm hand weighing every, I'm making them by hand. We're pouring it out and you know, putting the soaps in the jars and hand weighing them, tapping them to make sure that they're, we get them as flat as possible. And, you know, so, and make sure, you know, it's four ounces or a little bit over. Uh, we have to, for water uh, evaporation, we put a little bit more in. But um, we're still doing everything by hand. And we're doing everything with the, the aftershave splashes, pouring them in by hand. <laughs> it's, a, it's a tremendous task. It took us three months, um, literally uh, 18 hours a day, seven days a week. For three months, yeah, Easy to get burnt out. That's why I took. A, we, took we just the family because my my wife is very 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 much involved, and my daughter as well. well we're going to lose my daughter for for college, but um, I mean, it truly is a family business. So we, um, it was an enor enormous task. We hired a lot of people. Thank God for um, 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 our distributor in Italy. Um, he's he was very patient with us right from the beginning, and during this whole process, I ended up buying. See here, but I have a big. So I used to cook in the twenty, you know, twenty core yeah, pots, yeah, right, yeah. on induction. So I don't cook on induction cooktops anymore. So I had these big production um, vats. I have one here. Um, that one sucks. <laughs> and I have one over here, which is much better. It's a, um, it's a double boiler. So um, it's impossible to burn. You can just keep the soap warm and ready to go for for. Literally, I had for, for like three days on on one just to see how how long it would keep it stay nice mm. so i'm buying actually another one of these much larger and then this one i'm going to uh, use for candle making so um but during this whole process i just couldn't i i couldn't create fast enough <laughs> the, the, the rate i was going it was going to take six months instead of three months <laughs> right we're back uh <laughs> we're back wait, wait. sorry about that it's a, a hot summer day in the northeast so 
uh, the building that where our facility is <laughs> lost electricity. So I'm using my my iPhone as a hotspot. <laughs> Nightmare. That's the uh, that, that's the downside of doing uh, live podcasting. Well, not not so much live because we can uh, we can edit that bit out. But yeah, it's a good job we aren't doing it live. Yeah, but yeah. Um, no, so we'll, we'll we'll crack straight on again. Um, I know you were talking about the large EU order. Um, I suppose in terms of your own lineup, have you got a favorite soap or a favorite product? Um, that really changes all the time, <laughs> to be honest with you. Uh, um, so I have ones that are really special to me, not necessarily my favorite. Um, the novelist will always be uh, uh, special because um, that kept us in business when I, I was ready to call it quits. And um, so uh, that one, uh, that one kept us afloat and um, it, it, it took off. Nothing like Asian Plum. I bet back in the, those days, we were doing, you know, no, no volume, you know, nothing compared to what we're doing now. But at least it, 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 it kept us going. I still had another job. So I wasn't dependent on, you know, doing so, so well, <laughs> but it just kept us, it kept us <laughs> going anyway. Cause I wanted to, I was ready to call it quits. Um, Cause it was just a real, it was a very difficult period. And um, so that one will always be near and dear and I'll never get, even if it, I sell one a year, I'll, I'll keep that. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep that in the, in the stable. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I love that. so uh, chasing the dragons always been a favorite of mine. Even surprisingly, my wife loves that. And that's not, you know, it's, I wouldn't say it's a feminine scent, but she always really, really liked that. Uh, I love the, I don't smoke weed by the way, but I love the smell of cannabis. <laughs> I think it's a, it's a, it's a great note to work with. So, um, and that, so I have some scents that, that utilize uh, the cannabis note. Khalifa is, is one, although you, you wouldn't really know it unless someone told you it, because it's, it, it's more like a fragrance, but even uh, um, cannabis on tall, I think it smells beautiful, but it, it utilizes the cannabis note, and that to me, it's it's more oh. pronounced than something like uh, Khalifa. And and same thing with Strawberry Fields. No, I'll have to say so, that. Um, I, I I love those two uh. ones. <laughs> Yeah, I th well, I think they're great. I'll, I'll, have, I'll, have, made, to, I'll have to bear those. Yeah. People may think it sucks. I, I was going to say, <laughs> I'll, I'll have to bear those in mind. I, I'm not. I don't smoke weed either myself, but I'm. I, I like the smell of it. You know what I mean? And it was. Um, mm. It was the same when I was in the military. I, I spent like 13 years in the British Army, and obviously smoking was. I suppose a, a part of that culture with some people. And whenever we were on exercise, I never. I never smoked, but. A, a lot of the guys got a lot of solace you, from smoking, and I used to. You still there? Bre breaking up a little bit there, Peter. What did you say? Uh, no, I, I was just wondering if you were still there. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm still here. Yeah, no. Oh no, yeah, you froze as well. You can blame me, and I'll blame you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um but no we'll yes, uh so we'll, we'll yes, move like on the scent of, of cannabis as well yeah i like to say and there too i haven't really tried to be honest and and yeah you hear good things about them so i'll i'll, I'll keep an eye out for them um that is a good yeah, question yeah, I, I like this i like it I, I like this question so is there what what's a one product or or soap from another artisan or company that you wish you'd uh you'd made or brought out That is a good question, but I, I really, this is going to sound strange to you um, coming from somebody who's in the business. And let's face it. I mean, um, I, I don't look at anyone as competitors because this is the truth. I'm not just blowing smoke up your ass and just saying <laughs> this, to, but I don't look at, at um, anyone as competition. I compete with myself. So I always try to improve and be the best that I can be. And if that's, if, if, if then people consider that to be among the best in the industry, then great, but um, I I only look to I, I don't look at others and say oh I got to beat them or so and I don't no. even I don't even listen. Um, this is again the God's honest truth. I've never tried CK six. I've never tried Zingari. I've ne I have uh, <laughs> uh, uh, shape with Barrister Man, but several versions ago, maybe two versions ago. Um, uh, Holy cow! I did I did try their latest ba wonderful base. Um, but I don't. I I'm always testing my stuff, so I don't. I don't shave like I did. Whereas a hobbyist, mm. you just want 
you want everyone, right? And you want to just collaborate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Now it's more about creating stuff for the business and test it. I'm always, I'm always tweaking. I want to show you. Do I have it here? Hold on one second. Or did I put it away? Um, <laughs> all right. So I don't see it. I have it someplace. Um, I have emu oil. Wow. Emu oil is wonderful, but I have, it's very, 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 very expensive. Mm. And, um, I'm going to be doing uh, a soap for one of the groups that uh, I started some time ago. Uh, there's other admins now in, in there as well. And it's, it's grown at lather and blade. Right. Yeah. And, um, so I'm going to do a, a soap for, for the group. And I think I'm going to throw in some emu oil <laughs> Wow. <laughs> and, um, and, um, I'm going to do something. I did a, a, a giveaway. I need to ship out and uh, I, I put some emu oil in that. So, you know, I'm always, I'm always tinkering and mm -hmm. I'm always looking to do something better, you know, always, always looking to improve, which is what Kaizen is to, is to constantly improve. Yeah. So um, yeah, yeah, no, to, no. to answer your question, I haven't tried <laughs> any, any soaps <laughs> of late of people that you would consider, uh, um, you know, top tier, whatever you want to call yeah. these artisans it's not because i'm not interested it's just in a way i'm not <laughs> I, i'm just more involved with just <laughs> yeah testing no and testing, i right? get it you've got yeah so yeah so so but I, well, I, i'll answer how about if i answer it in a different way um yeah, yeah. so um i i would say this um i think um one artisan i'm not necessarily in, on best of terms with will carius of barrister man um so we've had a, a falling out some years ago, but I respect the man and that brand I respect tremendously. <laughs> I'll tell you that Barrister and Man changed the game. So back when Barrister and Man started, there were not nearly as many artisans out there. But when they started, they, it's like the, the clouds opened and there was nothing like it in the industry. Mm. And um, they, Barrister and Man forced everyone that was in the game to be better or become obsolete. And um, so that's probably the biggest compliment I can give anyone. And I'm not even, <laughs> you know, we don't, it's not like we're inviting each other over for dinner. So, but, um, so that wasn't a, an exact answer to the question, but, um, and I, I don't envy anyone or there's not a, a soap that, um, you know, that I wished I created or something like that. Um, but that is something that I think people should take notice because that's, I think they really changed the game. I could be wrong, but that's my, my opinion. And then everyone was playing catch up. <laughs> you know, I think a lot of people have, you know, yeah. have, after a while, but it's, it's very competitive, but they're still, you know, mm. the, the best of the best of the best. Yeah, definitely. Um, no, that's a very yep. diplomatic answer, Peter. Well done. <laughs> um, so I asked, um, I left <laughs> it a little bit late. Um, yeah, yeah, no, that's fair enough. I um, I left it a bit late, and I do like it is infinitely better when you get a bit of listener interaction. So I, I put a, a post out. Um, in fact, I'll fly through these. I've got some questions of my own, actually. We'll fly through these. Um, the the collaboration with Jody Gonzalez that you've obviously posted pictures of. Where, where did that come from? How did that come about? Oh, uh, yeah. So um, a, a couple of years back, let me, let me backtrack. Because I, I get some heat, but very little, mostly on one a, a social media platform um, uh, about having a model mm -hmm. and you know some of my labels. So um, I like to do things different, right? That's I think that's what our, our sets us apart from maybe some other brands. My website's a little bit different. I'm a, I'm certainly a bit different, it's, you know, <laughs> and um, I get bored. I get bored very easily, right? So. Um, I can't have a brand that's just vanilla and like everyone else, that's safe, right? And I probably would appeal to a lot more people. There's probably a, a, a good percent, not a good, I would say a small percentage of, uh, of folks that will never try my brand because they don't like my marketing and they don't like that I have a sexy model or something like that. <laughs> and uh, uh, she's not there now. Um, she, meaning <laughs> um, Justine, I, had a, I have a, a big poster of Justine who was our, our, our first model. And, um, um, so, 
she was the first and some people, you know, she's very curvaceous and very sexy and she, you know, she's got her tattoos going on and um, she fit the brand really well. So that was really more for the club brand. And I, and I thought she fit really yeah. well. So our, our brand is, you know, we're a bit edgy, you know, we have a damn good soap. We have really good products, but we, we we're just different. So um, when it comes to marketing and product positioning, I really don't follow what, other artisans in this market are doing i look at like what the fragrance houses are doing and other yeah. other um um vertical markets so I, I i'm not aware of anyone doing it what, what we did so i hired a model we had a, a real photo shoot you know i've <laughs> rented lofts in manhattan had uh, um, um launch parties for product launches i rented a yacht in manhattan and we had a, a over 110 <laughs> people um, uh, so, you know, I like to do things different. I like to think out of the box because that's how you, you position yourself different because you can have the very best soap. There's some great soap makers out there that have gone nowhere and they're still in the kitchen. It'll be in their kitchen, uh, for the end of time. Maybe that's what, maybe that's what they want to do. Uh, maybe they don't want to have a, a, a big business, but, um, a lot of, you have to have a great product, but you have to have branding. You have to be able to market. You have to be able to talk like what we're doing. Be willing to put yourself out there. Be open to criticism. I'm not really good at that, by the way. Um, <laughs> sometimes I'm thick-skinned, but if you catch me at a at a moment, <laughs> you know I can I can I I have somewhat of a Napoleon complex. So uh, I, uh, yeah, I did <laughs> notice that on uh, on I did notice that on Instagram post. And I was trying to find it earlier. Um, I can't remember. I'm, I'm sure it was something to do with Khalifa, and somebody had made a comment, and you just kind of went, did I "Well, did I, I don't care. I don't care what." You yeah, well, in not so many words, but you kind of went, well, I don't care what you think. <laughs> yeah. So. Zero fucks. I mean, so, so, <laughs> truthfully, I want, you want, I want everyone to love me. Everyone wants to be loved, right? But, yeah, yeah. but it's impossible. And I have to be who, who I am. I'm not, what you see is, this is, this is it. This is me. So warts and all. I do some things really well. And I do things not so well. <laughs> um, so, you know, hopefully the things that I do well outweigh the things that I don't do so well. Um, so to your question with the um, uh, with Jody. So I had the model. I had Justine. Justine was great, beautiful, half Italian, half Vietnamese. Ah, oh, electricity just came back. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. So, um so, but she, you know, she's doing really well and she moved to Miami. So she splits up her time in Miami and in the Northeast. So um, I wanted to find someone a little bit closer, but also uh, I wanted to do something different because I've introduced the Skin Essentials line. Yeah. And um, both, I think, are equally uh, as beautiful as, you know, uh, but um, I thought Jody. Jody brings some things different to the table, and um, I, I thought this was a, it was time for a, a fresh, a new, a new face. And so she comes from New York City. She's a, a working model. Uh, the photographer came from the. It cost me a lot of money um, uh, <laughs> to have them come up this way, and um, but it was well worth it. I think the pictures came out great. Some of them I just threw on um, social media. Um, some I'm going to incorporate into the site. Um, and then, you know, I'm going to start doing some Google ads and stuff like that. So, and we're going to do another photo shoot when she comes back from Alaska. She's uh, originally from Alaska and she's going to be out there for 90 days. So, um, and I'm going to be gone for a month to Asia. So at some point when, when, when she's back, we'll, 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 we'll do something else. I want to do, I want to shoot a video, uh, which would be good for marketing and for, for like an ad, but, um, yeah. we didn't do that with this, with this shit photo shoot but anyway that's why I'm, I'm looking to always do things different nobody else does that and at least not that i know of and i really get my my cue from from the fragrance world um mm. so it's, yeah it's what i do yeah uh, no i think, think? i say how, how'd you like the pictures yeah they're another really good i was gonna say I, I think she does she fits the not necessarily the overall brand but certain elements of it like the the, the khalifa side of things i think she fits well into khalifa and the, the darker side of that yeah. But yeah, yeah, I think it's a definitely like you say it's a unique uh, 
I suppose, marketing strategy. And yeah, if you haven't seen any of the pictures, if you head over to Instagram, Peter's got them on the uh, A&E Instagram account, some of the pictures on there, and they are well worth checking out. Um, something else I noticed when I was looking through the website just before we started, uh, the, the undersea, you're changing the labels for that. Uh, how come? Yeah, so um, the art, so the agreement with the artist is that we're going to be doing this for about a year. And originally, I was just going to do the Undersea. It was going to be a limited edition, mm. even though it didn't say it. It was going to be a limited edition soap. But um, it came out really good. So um, I've decided to keep it for the time, at least through the summer. Mm. And, um, and I have an artist. So I have somebody... Uh, so I have an artist that works, I wouldn't say works for me, but works with me. Uh, Dorian, she works, uh, she, she lives in the Republic of Georgia. So um, she's not based in the US. Um, so she's in Georgia, she's a tattoo artist, but she's a remarkable artist in her mm -hmm. own right. And um, so she's working on some artwork for me. Um, she made some changes. I asked for some more different things and we're gonna see how it is. And if I like it, then I'm gonna introduce it. Nice, and nice. That, yeah, that I think uh, for the, the yes, scenes. but also I had guys that said they loved the artwork, and then I had guys that tell me they hated it. So, um, <laughs> which, in a way, that's good, isn't that what art is supposed to be? You, you know, it's supposed to have it's supposed to create conversations, right? And, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, you know. The, so an artist's vision may not be someone else's vision. I mean, some people love traditional art. Some people love, um, you know, uh, modern art. And some people don't understand modern art whatsoever. <laughs> and I think it's absolute rubbish. You know? So but that's what's great about art. I mean, you can look into it and see whatever your, whatever your imagination is. You can, you know, whenever I look at that, by the way, and I have an artwork piece that you sent me uh, that's hanging on the wall. Um, uh, every time you look at, certain artists artwork you actually pick up different things almost like uh, a beautiful fragrance where you can pick up maybe um the, the next time you use it you pick up different notes yeah. same thing with uh, even a, a shaving soap um if it's done if it's done right you can pick up different notes sometimes it smells a little bit different uh the next time you use it yeah yeah no definitely yeah so that's the, the answer to that question so yeah, so yeah. I decided yeah i haven't um uh, finalized the, the the artwork yet nice no uh, yeah i was gonna say the uh the artwork did uh it did divide certain opinions and i think um i don't think a, a label would ever stop somebody using a soap it's just not what like for me scent is a big thing one of my best friends yeah one of my best friends uh, david gonzalez <laughs> he refuses to shave with it because of the artwork <laughs> <laughs> so there you go <laughs> oh no i don't think it, yeah you know what i mean you could have the worst la art, like label artwork in the world and it never stopped me using the soap but scent is is certainly something yeah i mean yeah it, it scent for right. me is a massive thing but um Right, we'll move on. Like I said, we I'd asked I'd asked the I suppose the community for some questions to send in some questions. We've had a few. We'll we'll, we'll fly through these. So uh, these are from Instagram. This one's from uh, David or Dyspraxic Shaver. He said uh, he still hasn't tried, and I think we've sort of mentioned we've answered this question already, but still hasn't tried A and E well at all, which is surprising. I thought everybody had, um, but. Um, he's always he always hears about kaizen base from people, and my question is: there plan to tweak the formula? Well, I think you've already sort of alluded to the fact that there's a kaizen two coming out, isn't there? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I should probably talk about kaizen two a little bit at some point, but but yeah. So um, kaizen two, kaizen two has been out now for about six months um, for the for the club members. Um, I didn't want to rush it as a, a public release. Um, for a couple of reasons. One, it was just so close to Kaizen. Kaizen is still <laughs> relatively new, um, right? It's not, I mean, it's not that old. Um, so uh, I, I didn't, there was no reason to rush it out. And plus one of the benefits of being a club member, and I'm not trying to sell it, you know, but one of the benefits is that they, they get access to stuff that the public yeah, yeah. never has access to, or, or they certainly get it before. I mean, Asian Plum was re released to them. They had it for probably four months before it was released to the public um, and some other soaps. So uh, 
Kaizen right now is not not available to the public. Chasing the Dragon is not available to the public, but it will be when when I release uh, Kaizen too. Um, the other, so that was the the main reason not being too close to um, Kaizen. Um, and then there was another reason. Actually, there's a few reasons. And another reason why, excuse me, I'm just introducing it to the um, uh, club, the club brand. So a and not going to have Kaizen too, at least not initially, not now, um, because it's it's a, it's a big deal when you switch over. You know, for the club brand, that's always been an in-house brand. So we we don't sell nearly as much club branded soaps as we would with A&E because A&E is all over the world and the club is just sold through primarily through me. So it's, it's an easy transition to transition A&E. Um, I have to worry about, um, now I just sent out, you know, 20,000 <laughs> products, you know, about half of which are, are, are soaps. So I have, I have retailers to worry about, I have, you know, Magards, West Coast Shaving. And so um, I don't want to screw them and all of a sudden tell them, oh, by the way, your, your soap is obsolete because uh, I just introduced Kaizen too. Yeah. Uh, so it has to be something that's, that's really, play. people don't understand this. They don't, there's so much that goes into it. Also, um, there was a lot of money invested to get EU certification and um, now we're certified, but, um, but I've had uh, K2 for six months and it, it wasn't certified until just recently. So um, I can't just ship it out anyway to the, I can't mm. introduce it here in the States and screw you guys over and not make it available. <laughs> so what am I going to have the, the European retailer sell uh, 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 Kaizen, which is a great, it's a wonderful base. And then um, have everyone else available, you know, other retailers here in the States yeah. have hit too. So there's a lot that goes into making a decision. So uh, the club brand will have K2 and um, Andy will always, well, for the time being, uh, be, be Kaizen. Did I answer oh, you question? I, t I tend to go off tangent. Yeah, that, that answers yeah. <laughs> no, that, that answer is perfect, yeah. Kaizen and Khalifa. Perfect, no. Yeah, so Khalifa <laughs> would be in Kaizen. Um, um, yeah. That's nice, the Italian nice. side, no, they, by the way. The Italian side, they, they go it. to a dinner table. You, you can never get up. You can even get up to go to the bathroom because you've got everyone yapping. And they all, and they all talk <laughs> with, their, with their hands. So. See, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm too... I'm, I'm too polite. I'm British. I'm too polite to interrupt you, so I'll have to let you just carry on talking. No, let me no, let me tell you. I know a lot, that's bullshit because I know a lot of Brits. They're not so polite. No, well, yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. Well, so is it as polite? Maybe, maybe it's manners. I've got to be. I've got to be respectful. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> just tell me to shut the fuck up. And All right, yeah. Mind. Right, Peter, shut the fuck up. We're going to move okay. on. <laughs> Uh, so this what this is from uh, this is from Dan W on Instagram. He says, "What inspires Peter's scent choices? What what what? I suppose, and it's an interesting one for me because I've, I've I'd like to start my own. I'd like to start my own brand, but it's probably not going to happen until I get into a position where I can afford to do it and have the time to do it. But I have. I, I mean, I get. Um, ah, you can start. I started with five hundred bucks. Ah. You can you can start. It, it you just start small. Yeah." So literally, I started the company with five hundred. Oh, bucks, there you go. The question: So what inspires? Yeah, what inspires your scent choices? Sense? Yeah. It, well, that really does vary. So some like um, um, Khalifa is, is based upon. A, a, I'll show you. Do I have any? Oh. Um. You can see I like it a lot. <laughs> there's, there's not much left in it. Um, Nasamaro uh, Black Afghano. So I don't know if you can see. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's based upon, not an exact dupe, uh, but that was the inspiration. Um, certainly not a clone, but it's, 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 it's nice, you know, people, and people love it. So, um, so certain, certainly fragrances, because I, I have a, a ton of fragrances, mostly niche fragrances, like this would be considered a niche fragrance, versus a designer like Dior or Chanel or, you know, Tom Ford. Tom Ford is actually a crossover. It could, it could be considered niche. It, it behaves, the, some of the scents are behave like a niche fragrance. 
but they're more mainstream. Um, yeah. So some some fragrances inspire me. I travel a lot, as I mentioned. I'm going to be going to um, to Asia again. Um, last February, just before before um, COVID hit really bad, um, I was in Australia and uh, Phuket. So I get, I, I get, and just prior to that, a few months before that was in Bali, uh, in Australia. I, I, I used to fly out to Australia often, but um, I, I travel a, a great, a great deal. And so a, a lot of um, my travels have inspired me um, as well. So, um, and a, a lot of times I'll just come up with, this is how I normally work and it's backwards compared to um, perhaps other artisans. Many times I'll create a label first and have the label inspire what the scent should be. So um, actually I do that more often than not, uh, unless it's a, a fragrance inspiration. Uh, otherwise, I, I think of the artwork and the label and what I would like to create with a label uh, design and artwork. And then from there, figure out what are some of the notes that would match up that label. Isn't that weird? <laughs> That's it's just yeah. I don't know. It's bad. <laughs> well, not really. A lot of uh, a lot of songwriters. I can't remember where they did whether they do it. They come up with the song first, and then they put the lyrics into the song. Or they they write this, They come up with the lyrics, and then they they figure out what music could go mm. with the lyrics. So it's kind of a similar thing, really. Right. Um, right. No, well, they, yeah, there you go. Yeah, that yeah, that answers yeah, the question. So this one. This one's from Craig, Craig Will on Facebook. Um, he's, he's one of my loyal supporters. He always comes up with at least one question. I think you've, we've already answered the first part of his question with regards to will Kaizen 2 be available um, in the UK. Um, I'm sure it will at some point, but he, he also says, will um, will candles be available uh, oh, in I the UK? Because his wife Actually, and... I didn't uh, answer that. Actually, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. But there's something that's very important that um, you don't. I don't think anyone really knows about. So along with this, one of the reasons why this order to the EU is so big is I sent a whole shipment of club branded K2 soaps over there. So I've partnered with um, uh, Barbieri, um, oh, Uniti, whatever. It's the name of the, the company. Goodfellas. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. They have a they have a membership program, and they um, so I've partnered with them. They're going to warehouse um, our club branded soaps and sell our club branded soaps through their memberships. You, st you still have to be a member someplace, right? So yeah, um, through through my store, shavingshoponline.com. A uh, little plug, but shavingshoponline.com. You don't have to be a member. Uh, I, on the twenty fifth, I'm going to release K two to the public. So you can buy it there. Uh, if you're a member, you get 20% off, but you also get access to some other stuff that's not available to the public. Um, um, but if you're in the UK, you're, you know, EU, anywhere else in the world, um, if it's easier to purchase through them, and if, if you're a member of their uh, membership program, I don't, I don't remember what the, it's a different, um, it's, a, it's, it's a different cost structure. I, I don't know what, yeah, yeah. what, you know, how that works. I, I didn't get involved with that. Um, but um, if you want to be a member, you can have access to uh, the club brand. So I, I like the idea wow. that we, it's, we still keep it somewhat. I hate the word exclusive because that sounds like you want to leave out people. We don't want to leave out people, but we, I, I want that brand to be. Um, it was always meant to be an in-house brand. And Ariane and Evans was supposed to always be the retail arm of the shaving shop. That's how it was created. And, um, and it's a funny story how I created it. If you want me to touch on that before we hang up, but I, I can do so. But um, so the, the club brand was never meant to be sold retail. I always wanted to keep that edgy, edgier than Ariana and Evans and um, you know, do certain things with it. Have a, you know, whether it be a sexy model that with tattoos <laughs> all over or, you know, whatever. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to keep it different. And I could I could be a little bit more risque with that brand because it was always an in-house brand. So um, there was never I, I was never going to really sell that um, to you know a mom and pop you know boutique <laughs> where they're selling fragrances and you know it was always it was always meant to sell uh, there. Um, and now it's going to be sold at Goodfellas. So we have a lot of uh, European-based uh, members of the club. I have over a thousand members. So which is 
I was happy if I can ever, I was in my mind, I was thinking, geez, if we ever get 500, that's amazing. <laughs> and we have over a, a thousand members. So that, that to me is, a, is just amazing on itself. And, you know, um, with very little drop off. So uh, we, I think we're doing something right um, with, with that business model. So, um, but th they pay for that exclusivity mm. and early access. And, the, you know, they, of course they get the discounts and stuff like that. But I did a poll with them. I'm go again, I'm going off tangent. But I did a poll, an internal poll, thinking that uh, the biggest reason why um, they became members was because of the, the discount. And it turns out that's not the case, that it was the exclusivity. Um, having access to something that is not readily available everywhere else. Um, so I was really shocked at that. So that's one of the, the benefits. So we're still able to keep that with the partnership that we have going on with Goodfellas. So it's it, 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 if people want the club and they're willing to join their membership program, which incorporates all, I, I guess, a lot of other stuff. It's not just the club. Um, you know, they can do so. Wow, there you go. Well, there's a there? there's an opinionated. Yeah, yeah, I'm still here. Can you hear me? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I can hear you. Yeah, I was going to say there's a, an opinionated Brit podcast exclusive right there. So <laughs> it is actually. I don't think I announced that. Oh, wow. Funny. Well, there you go. Yeah, I was going to do a YouTube video. Ah, well, I'll, I'll do that for you, Peter, when this releases. So this will probably release some point next week. Everybody uh, everybody can get that little little tidbit of uh, information. But I think that probably answers Craig's question mm. quite well. So, no, thanks for that. Um, right, yeah. last one. It, it would be cheaper for them. Honestly, it would be cheaper for them to – because of shipping, yeah. it's, it's a nightmare. And I don't know how this whole thing with um, uh, the, the Brits leaving the EU and, you know, how that Brexit thing works. But uh, my guess is is that it's still going to be a lot cheaper to 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 um, have it come in from Italy than it would be from the states. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so that's, it, it may be worth. It. I've, I've dabbled with the, the the thought of joining the club, but I think like like you say, the shipping doesn't put me off. It's just you've got to you've got to do what you can do within the realms of your. I suppose your finances. So yeah, I'll definitely look into that because that's something yeah. I'd love to, I'd love to get some of the club exclusives that, that for me, it, it, like say it wouldn't be the discount. It'd be the exclusivity of that soap and having something that you can't mm. just get like your hands on easily. So no, that's, that's quite exciting. Right. Um, so this is the last question and, I, and I've saved the best till last because this particular person said this will probably make you quite cross. But <laughs> So he said, maybe not answer it. And I said, well, no, I'm going to answer it because I don't know the answer to it. And, and I'm sure there's other people that don't. So it, um, this one's from uh, Garrett Smallwood, who is, is known as the Shaving Disciple on uh, YouTube. And he says, he says, what? <laughs> he says, when will Peter start offering samples? <laughs> <laughs> actually i've been thinking of i you know what so i did a video years ago about about samples and why i don't use i hate samples personally. <laughs> um i you know people friends would send me samples and i would throw them in the drawer i would never use them because to me um as a hobbyist um you don't get the full experience um that you would so smelling something out of a mm. small sample you don't get the, when you put your nose to it you, you don't get that full uh, sense of what the soap really is, unless it's a full jar. And uh, I was always, and then uh, it's just a pain in the ass because hey, you know how do you get it out? <laughs> I like I like you know building up a lather in the jar, you know, and doing it through samples. It's more of a hassle to, to me. Other guys they won't buy anything without a, a, a sample. So um, you know, God bless them. That's every. There's no one right way of being a <laughs> hobbyist, right? So you can whatever whatever makes you happy, but for me, I never really enjoyed samples. I just kind of took the risk and purchased what I thought I would like. Plus, after a while, you know who your artisans that you like, so you know that the base is good. And it's just a matter of the scent. So, but I have thought about. Um, I don't know. Now that I have employees, it, it, it will be a bit easier, but I still have challenges with the company. Um, we, we don't have a reputation of being super fast getting mm. orders out. And that's always been an Achilles heel from, from day one uh, for me. Not when, not when I was selling other people's soaps because I had, them in, I had everything in stock and I had the inventory. And if we were sold out, that means we, we were sold out. Um, I've never been able to keep inventory 
um, here. As soon as I make stuff, it's it's just it's sold. I can't keep up, and I, I'm cleaned out now. With this <laughs> this uh, Italian order. So um, and even with the employee, I have like uh, I don't know six or seven employees. That but that includes family too. I mean, so yeah. but six or seven people work. And um, but now that we're done with the the Italian order, and now that I have these big bats, before I was cooking batches of a hundred. Now each each uh, pot can cook 400 at a time so and now i'm getting a larger one so i want the larger one i think we can do about 600 wow um at a clip so now um it shouldn't be a problem with that and 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 if we once we get caught up uh then maybe i'll do i'll offer samples (laughs) i I won't give them away yeah it's just not what we do it's not our business model um but maybe i'll have sample packs um, or, 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 or something like yeah. that, um, that if somebody wants to purchase it, they can purchase it. But the thing is, listen, it's a business, right? Yeah, I understand a lot of people, um, they, they won't buy unless they have a, a sample. I, I can appreciate that. And there's certainly business that have been turned away because of us not offering that. But MadGuards does offer samples. And I think there's a place in the UK that they can order samples through, right? Is yeah, there, there is. Yeah, it's um, Shave Dash. Shave Dash. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, so uh, I mean, th- there are samples out there, just not through me. Um, and, and <laughs> honestly, it takes. You can speak to other artisans about this. They may have a different different opinion, but the ones that I've spoken to agree with me. Maybe they're they're not as boisterous, and they they won't won't admit it publicly. <laughs> but it takes as much time to ship out a two dollar and fifty cent sample as it does for a, a soap set, right? And yeah, yeah. again, this is a, a business now, right? It's not just a hobby. So I have to not, I have to try to look at things from a business perspective. I don't always do that well, um, but um, to me, it just doesn't make financial sense if you weigh everything together. Now, if I can get, if I can make a whole pot and at, at one time have one of my employees during the spare time, if it's, if it's a slow day, you know, spoon them out, and it's a pain in the ass to do. I mean, think about it. You have a little, a little jar this, you know, this big, and you have to take a spoon and spoon it in and make it nice. Mm. It's it's time consuming. It's not you know. I, I don't. I, I mentioned this before about manufacturing. I can't just press a button and have this big machine spit out a thousand samples of each. Of yeah, each yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a manual process. And, and who the hell's got time for that? I you know, I, I don't. So. Um, so that's the that's the reason. So they, there I'm you sorry. go. So, uh, <laughs> but, so Ga- Garrett, maybe, Garrett, maybe get back in your box. <laughs> sorry, mate. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Thanks, for that. I, I mean, that. that, that I hope I don't sound like a total dick. No, no. You've got yeah, yeah. You've got to be honest, don't you? Gonna appreciate it. Yeah, no. Yeah, I mean that, that that that's the truth. I mean, so it, it, the best you can. You yeah. want everyone to to to. To, to, to like what you do. But sometimes you have to make decisions that um, goes against the grain. No, exactly. Uh, you can't please everybody. You can't please everybody. Well, God, I... Yeah, <laughs> right, I, we'll move on. This is... Um, so this is one of my favourite parts of the podcast is the quick fire questions. And these, these are intended just to be quick sort of answers. Um, they could be any... Uh, could be anything or or anything uh it could be weird and wonderful so yeah yeah be prepared for some strange ones but we'll we'll start off um would you rather live one life that lasts a thousand years or a hundred lives that last 10 years wow that's pretty deep probably a hundred lives that last 10 mm, years yeah that's what because i can live life each life to the fullest exactly yeah li- living each life to the fullest um who the fuck wants to live a thousand <laughs> years you know <laughs> i don't know if i want to i mean it'd be interesting well it depends what would, would i be living a thousand years as a 28 year old male well uh, no you'd be like living a little bit taller a little bit more handsome <laughs> or would i be a thousand year old man <laughs> yeah, yeah so, you'd be a thousand year old man yeah, and but, but you'd but be think, yeah You'd be pretty famous. It would be interesting. (laughs) Maybe. maybe. Um, Right. The next one. Next one. Would you rather have eyes that can film everything or ears that can record everything? 
Wow. <laughs> I'm very visual. So I would say eyes that can film everything. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think I'd probably go with that as well. Um, if you could visit anywhere in the world that you haven't been to already, where would it be? Um, by the sounds of it, you've uh, you've been to quite a few places anywhere, but if you could go anywhere, where would you go? Um, I was just talking about this. Uh, Maldives. Nice. Nice. Yeah, so the Maldives. Um, I will go there, especially now that um, um, I'll probably be spending more and more time um, in that region so ho ho hopefully I'll, I'll go there but yeah that's that's one place i would just love to okay go. um japan for sure that's so that's another place yeah. um yeah so yeah i guess that the whole region of the um vietnam would be another one i love pho so if i, I could have i can eat pho every day so i don't know <laughs> if you like uh, vietnamese food nice so, nice uh yeah and, um and uh, italy and i love italy i just go i've been there before many times but um that's probably I said the UK was my home away from home, uh, but I, I don't work for the the, uh, the the UK company anymore. So uh, <laughs> now I'll say that Italy is now my 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 third home away from home. So I, anytime I, I get a chance to go to Italy, I'll go there. Good stuff. So there, I um, three. There's some three that'll do. Three's better than one. There's some uh, there's some general knowledge yeah. questions in here as well. Also, or some questions. There's is the first one. What was the most downloaded app of 2020? Any ideas? Download an app? How the hell would I know? Yeah, well, I don't like know. The, uh, the, um... Fuck. Who was? <laughs> Am I not to eat? <laughs> not really, but you... <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I'm going to pass. It, you to pass? Yeah, you can pass. I, I'm probably some porn site. I don't know. <laughs> have a, um, I don't know. So my guess is if they have an app, it would probably probably be it was um it was actually that it, it, see that I don't even know so um, TikTok it was TikTok that Pornhub has an app oh was it TikTok, TikTok yeah oh that makes sense yeah. <laughs> um all right here's another well, question that could be considered pornography in some reason <laughs> it could be yeah, yeah you're right it could be um a lion is is just a true or false question can a lion's roar be heard up to eight kilometers away true or false eight kilometers is pretty far isn't mm. it i would say yes if it was like in the middle of the night it's very quiet <laughs> Oh, in a forest? Did you say in a forest? No, 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 just uh, anywhere. Well, they don't live in forests. They live in the plains, Like the right? savannah, yeah. Yeah, I would say the answer is yes. It is correct. Yeah, well is done. Yes. It's true. It is true. Um, uh, what should we ask now? I'm not going to ask all of them because time's ticking. Um, <laughs> this is a funny question. Would you, yeah. would, would, you, would you rather fight 100 duck-sized elephants or one elephant-sized duck? <laughs> well, probably 100 duck sized elephants. No, yeah, duck sized elephants. I, I think I can kick their ass. <laughs> really? So, but a duck the size of an elephant, I would get fucked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, funny. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'd, uh, yeah, I may take my, I, I may take my chances with the elephants as well, I think. Yeah. Um, oh, let's test you. Let's test your movie knowledge then. Which character? speaks the first line in the original 1977 Star Wars movie. Uh, this is a guess. Luke Skywalker? Mm, no, it, it was it was C-3PO. Okay, sorry. <laughs> hey, there's no need to be sorry. It, it, it was just a, a random question. Um, I like this question. If you could have been involved in any historical event from any period in time, what would it be and why? Hmm. So our history is different than what you learn in the, in, <laughs> in the EU. So you, you guys... It's the truth. Uh, we learn a lot about American history, right? But you guys, and I know this just through my travels and my friendships in the EU, 
um, or in the UK, um, you guys know more about world history mm. than than we we do. Um, but I would say I would love I would love to be a fly on the wall during World War II uh, meetings between between Churchill, Stalin, and Roosevelt, and what they what they discussed when when the ship mm. was really going down, and um, <laughs> And their backs were up against it. That would that to me would be interesting. Mm. That would be an interesting period. No, I like that. That's a good. That's a good answer. Yeah, I never really thought. I mean, everybody's got a different answer, but yeah, I think you're right. I think it'd be quite interesting. Um, what should we ask now? What should we ask now? <laughs> would you rather talk like Pee Wee Herman every time you're having a serious conversation, or laugh every time somebody cried? Um, so I would, I would have to say, uh, so it would sound like Pee Wee Herman. Yeah. You have to, Is yeah. You said? yeah. It sounds like Pee Wee or laughing. I, I mean, I can't laugh when every time someone cries, cause it depends on, how, uh, you know, are they crying over a, the loss of a loved one? Mm -hmm. I don't want to laugh. Uh, I would feel terrible if I started laughing like that. <laughs> so, um, Although laughter, I mean, laughter, there should be more laughter in the world. That's for sure. Especially, especially the way things are, uh, well, in this country politically. Um, so I think there needs to be more, more laughter, but I, I would say probably in this case, <laughs> probably sound more like Pee Wee Herman than laughing at someone's, uh, uh, <laughs> Misfortune. Yeah. Um, right. Time, yeah. Last question then, and I'm 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 feeling confident you might get this one, Peter, because I know you like your rap music. Um, which American rapper released the College Dropout in 2004? Oh Jesus! I do know. I'm not gonna. I'm not picking up my phone. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna embarrass myself. I can give you a clue. Shall uh, I give you a clue? How much time do I have? Oh, you can take as long yeah, as need, me Peter. Clue. Uh, he was married to one of the Kardashians. Oh, Kanye. Yeah, Kanye. Kanye, Kanye West? West. Yeah. You yeah. got it. All right, see, that, was, that was easy. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like that. I mean, I, I haven't asked every single question because... Uh, yeah, times upon us, but that's um, that. This brings us on to the last part of the podcast, unfortunately, because it has been a pleasure speaking to you. So for for anybody that's um, watch, yeah, anybody that's watching this on YouTube, this will probably be the end of the, the what you can watch watch due to the copyright sort of rules with the music. But obviously, if you ha if if you listen to it on Podbean or iTunes or Spotify, you can listen to the, the music quiz. But if you're watching this on YouTube, unfortunately, um, you won't be able to watch the quiz. But anyway, yeah, it's time for the world famous Beat the uh, Intro Music Quiz. It's feared and revered around the world. 